Alan, what uh, kind of impact is global warming having right now on the polar regions? I think there are two answers to that question. If I take you first to my favourite place, the Antarctic, much of Antarctica is not changing, surprisingly enough. But the part that sticks out towards South America, the region called the Antarctic Peninsula, is changing markedly. It's changing faster there than anywhere else on the planet almost at this time. So it's risen by about three degrees in the last 50 years or so. If I take you to the other end of the planet, it's probably changing faster there than even in the Antarctic Peninsula, or just as fast. And the reason for that is that it's very close to freezing point and a little bit of warming melts much of the ice. So the sea ice is at its lowest levels in the Arctic Ocean that we've ever seen in historical records. What does this mean for the rest of the world then? Well, just let's take the glaciers melting. Um, quite simply, sea level rises and therefore the probability of flooding, the impacts on places like Bangladesh will be first and some of our Pacific islands. So you and I might not see it quite so much in the short term here, but there are other places in the world that will see the impacts of these changes. Realistically, how long have we got right now? It depends on how bad you want the story to be. The real story is actually we should have started 20 years ago or maybe 30 years ago or maybe in the pre-industrial era. Actually, we must act now. The big concern we have is that many people think climate change is something two decades from now. And all these dates we're hearing about uh, targets in 2020 and 2050 are confusing the public that this is not an immediate challenge. We have to do things now. Uh, we should have been doing things five years ago, and we're not. The ICT industry right now has a bigger carbon footprint than the aviation industry, about 2 to 3% of emissions. That's predicted to go to 4 to 6% in the next 5 to 10 years. That is simply not possible. We cannot allow that to happen. So the industry itself must clean up its own house, and we must find ways for the ICT industry to reduce its carbon footprint not only to 2%, but to zero, and I think we have the technology to do that. The most recent economic forecasts are suggesting the sooner we start, the cheaper the solution will be for us. So even if it's nothing to do with the planet, economically, it's sensible to start now or yesterday. All the studies indicate uh, that using ICT will actually create significant business benefits as well as significantly reduce costs. The one study I mentioned, the Smart 2020, estimates that eight savings of $800 billion US are possible through use of ICT to reduce climate change. So this is not a bad news story. This is a phenomenally good news story if we move quickly. What part can ICT play in all of this? So ICT is broadly used in all sorts of aspects. It's from the internet and broadband as we know it, from the cell phones, from using smart uh, meters, smart sensors, uh, smart grid, and in every aspect, smart buildings and so forth. So it has a whole broad application areas in every aspect of society. Do you think the projects that you're seeing being launched here are going to go far enough? This is a great first step. We must go faster. We have to have more initiatives like this. And we can't wait uh, for government. I've got to applaud Cisco. We need industry leadership. And then events like this and initiatives like with this will help us move in that direction. We need personal impact in my view. We need government legislation. We need business initiative. And we need partnerships between all of those elements to address the issues that we're facing today.